Welcome to Talking Maine with a Bowtie Boy. I'm Tom Saviello, and I have my special friend, Gemma. Gemma, it's always a pleasure to have you back here. Good to see you. Mom, if you're watching, I just want you to let you know she's doing fine. She's been harassing me all the time, and much is appropriate. How do you like my tie, Gemma? I love it. I, I love, love the bones. bones. I love yep. bones. The I, bones. I dug it out special because mm -hmm. this is when to talk about archaeology again. Yep. Yep. So you, you've been busy this summer. We have, yeah. We've actually been pretty busy. All over the place? Yep, all over the place. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, let's start. Just let what you know. Let's just explain what archaeology is. Okay. So let's do that first, and then we'll get it, jump into it. So archaeology itself is um, the study of the human past. So it's uh, people themselves and the things they've left behind. So we wouldn't look at things like dinosaur bones, oh. but we could look at you know human burials if we needed to. Luckily, we don't often need to. Um, you know, any, any bones that people have left behind, like food and that kind of stuff. And then archaeological sites like Native American campsites and villages and cellar holes and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, but you still, you won't find obviously dinosaur bones, but you might find mammoth bones or other things that they were eating during that time. Exactly. If it overlaps with, yeah, right. you know, human. But you wouldn't trace back that where that came from. You would still stay with the human side of what was happening. Yes, yes. So have you ever found a mammoth bone? We haven't. But there are there are some in in Maine and and Vermont that date to about the same time as some of our sites. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow! I, I didn't realize that. So they, yep. there wasn't too long ago that they went extinct. Then. Nope. Uh, Twelve, eleven thousand years ago, that kind of period, end of the ice age. End of the ice age, mm -hmm. it kind of went away. Mm -hmm. So tell me where you've been. Where, where did you? Where do we start? Do we start on the the trails? Do we start on Popham? Um, well, let's just do a little reminder that we do. Cultural Resource Management Archaeology. Okay. So I, I work for Northeast Archaeology Research Center. I'm one of the co-owners, um, the assistant director, and also a principal investigator, which means I'm in charge of things. Um, uh -oh. And Yeah, I know, right? And we do Cultural Resource Management, CRM Archaeology, which means it's permit-related archaeology. Oh, okay. So the kind of places we go, the kind of sites we look at, we, we're basically doing archaeology normally in advance of development. Um, so if there's any laws stating that a development must have um, an archaeological assessment, such as uh, the site location of development law for Maine, Maine site law. Yeah, right. Um, and then, you know, if there's federal money or state money involved, things get an archaeological review. Um, and those kind of things. And then, and then we do, a, you know, a little bit of other stuff here and there. But basically, it's if if something is happening that would potentially affect an archaeological site, we go in and make sure that it's either either there's not a site there, it's not being adversely affected, or if it will be adversely affected, that we can do something about it, recover the information, and then go from there. I remember when I was at the mill with FERC. Federal Energy Resource Commission. Yeah. We had to do an archaeological study and we had to do like a phase one, phase two, and phase three. Yeah. Phase one, I think, is like you just do a cursory cruise, say, this is the river, there's a good chance there was something here. And then phase two, you kind of come and dig a few pits to see if you find anything. So I can remember them finding on the banks of a fire pit, digging down, you could find the ashes and so forth. And then we did, they out of that, we narrowed it down to what we call phase three, mm -hmm. which they really did a full excavation along the river in Canton. Yep. to see what they could find. Yep, yep. Each phase um, proceeds from the, the last one. So we first of all, we look and see if there's a chance that there should be any archaeology. So we kind of do a desk review before we even leave the office. Oftentimes the state does that, so it doesn't even get to us. Um, but we can do it ourselves. Second one is we go and look, dig a hole, or, or look and see if there's any artifacts eroding, that kind of stuff. Is there a site there? Phase two is there's definitely a site. How big is it? How does the project affect it? Where is it in comparison to the footprint or comparison to the riverbank that might be eroding? Um, and phase three only happens, um, it's a mitigation data recovery phase normally. It only happens if your project can't avoid uh, okay. an archaeological site. And that's the big one you see with the great big excavations and people digging all over the place. So in our case, we still had to do a phase three because it was a huge excavation in the field. Totally, even, yeah. though, even though we really weren't going to affect it because right. the dam had been in a long time, we still were required to do that. Yes, yeah, we've been doing a lot of FERC projects. Um, Couple in Maine, but mostly in Vermont. I mean, it yeah. was interesting. I remember them doing that and going out and seeing it. They found a whole bunch, I think I told you, this whole bunch of pipes, the little mm. white clay pipes. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> they found a 1710 Phillips head uh, 
King Philip dime, um, and they found a whole bunch of other pot, pieces of pottery and so yep. forth. So, and, and it just was, it was fascinating to me because I couldn't do that. They were painstaking. As an old soil scientist, I just dig the hole. You guys go down layer by layer with a little brush and a little trowel. And right. So, well, in phase two and phase three. Phase one, we just dig the hole. Just dig the hole. You know, yeah, is there anything there? Yeah. 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 So you can actually tell when you're on a shoreline or something where you think something's been there. Yeah. Yeah. You can, um, you can tell by what the landscape looks like. Is it flat level? Um, how much sedimentation has there been? We know like the Sandy River just dumps sediment and vast amounts of sand builds up over time. But sometimes if you see like an eroding cut bank, you can see in the bank, you can see maybe different layers, yeah. you know, and say, oh, this top layer, this top couple of feet might be recent, but then we've got what looks like could be old enough to preserve some archeology. span Yeah, there, there are certain things we look for. And it's harder in Maine too, if I understand right, to, to actually preserve some of this because our soils are so acid that it yeah. eats stuff up so that you yep. don't have the, the if, if dinosaurs were ever here, it's part of the soil. Right, yeah, it, it, it doesn't preserve organic material well. So organic material to preserve archaeologically either has to be waterlogged. So say it's below um, below the water level. You know, water levels have changed over time. Right. So if you get some um, deposits below the water level, that can preserve. Also, things can be burnt. Like say, if you have a fire hearth, you can get preserved seeds and bones and things. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I've often wondered because the Penobscot River, the Androscoggin River, they obviously were big mm -hmm. during the the uh, the different times that we talked about in the past. Yeah. And I often wonder sometimes in Wilton where they took out the dam that was behind Foster's, that what, what actually went on in that river, that stream valley. I don't know whether right. anybody's ever gone in there and looked. It's because right. nobody would pay for it. There would be no reason to do that. Right, right. Uh, is there anything that, do you know, would they take out that, we're going to get to the show in a minute, but I'm just fascinated. When they take out the dam in um, uh, Farmington for the salmon, is someone geared up, ready to go and look at that? Yes. Oh, good. Are you involved in that one? Might be. Oh, good. Then you can come tell us what might happen, what you found. Because yes, yes. I, I speculate you're going to find yeah, all Yeah, exactly. If, if things are happening, especially, like I said, if there's state and federal money. Yeah. And that you know, was... There, there's, there's a particular process that has to and, happen. And that's waterlogged. So it should be preserved mm -hmm. because yeah. that dam's been there, what, for almost 100 years or more. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So all right. where do we go first on our little travel log? Okay. What's our first one? I don't remember. Yep. Andre, what's our first one? What's our first one? The construction okay, construction, under construction the parking monitoring. Lot. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd bring in a few photos of, of things that we've been doing just to give like a little, you know, since, since I spoke to you last, yeah. um, to give a range of the kind of things that we do. So one of the things we do is monitoring. Monitoring is when there's construction happening and it's imminent and there might be something archaeologically that we'd, you know, not necessarily want to um, worry about mitigation. You wouldn't want to save the whole site, but it might have some interesting information. So down in the middle of Portland, which has obviously been built and rebuilt and, you know, landscaped and they've changed the bay and all these kind of things. We did some monitoring for a, um, an affordable housing project going in where there used to be a parking lot, um, because why would you need a parking uh, yeah. lot in right, Portland? Right. Um, so what they did is they cleared out um, the, the parking lot surface and, and we um, did some, we basically stand there and observe with our shovels and our measuring devices and say, you know, if we see something, we say stop, we clean it off, we photo it, we collect artifacts, that kind of thing. Wow. So you can see kind of right in the front of that photo, you can see uh, our stripy range pole, the black and white pole laying on the ground, it's marking, there's like a oh, little, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, like a little cistern in there um, and some foundation remains. So something was built there before. Yeah. And what happened in Portland was that in this area, um, this, is, this is right downtown. So there, was a, there were things built in, say, the 1850s, middle, middle of the 19th century. Big fire in 1866. Stuff got you know, raised to the ground pretty much. And if it wasn't, it got flattened. Things got built on top of it. So what you see when you dig down is you see so the fire. remains of the bottom of things. So the privies, the cisterns, the wells. So this would be a picture of some of that. Yep. So on the left-hand side, that's a privy, um, a nice, <laughs> a nice privy, <laughs> wood lines. I hope it was uh, petrified by the time you got into it. I think it was still a bit Mushy? moist. Ooh. Um, uh, that had lots of artifacts in it, and so did the cistern in the previous picture. Really? And then that's a, a well on the other side. Yep. So, so people threw stuff down the privy. Yep. 
Yep. And because, you know, the way um, Pompeii um, preserved because it was a kind of an immediate thing and then it, it just got covered over with ash. When things get abandoned immediately, you get the best archaeology. So basically there was the fire in 1866. Houses got abandoned. People didn't take their things with them. They left plates and dishes in the no, buildings, yeah. which then collapsed. And then when they rebuilt on top of it, all the trash got chucked in the privy. Oh, so and that the was privies like the and the wells are just oh, full all of stuff. just oh, interesting. All, the, all the stuff. Because it would have treated it as like the, the disposal unit. Yeah. And they just yeah, yeah, yeah. push it all into that because they yeah. didn't have landfills per se to go right. to. So they dumped it all in there. So oftentimes, wells and privies, aren't, they can be full of stuff, but these ones were particularly full of stuff because, you know, of the buildings getting knocked down after And the fire. more stuff than normal stuff. Yes. So yes. did you find anything? We're still we're still looking at, um, at those artifacts and trying to figure out what's going on. So, so what what kind of things did you find? Um, just like household goods from the late 1800s, from all the people that have lived there, and we've got census records that tell us all the families who lived there. They're all like Italian families. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Find a lot of spaghetti. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's cool. So you're, you haven't really sorted everything out there from that? Nope, still dealing with that one. How much did you find? So so you found that, took that out, and mm -hmm. then they ended up just building yep. so that it was, yep. it's we not there Yep, we photoed it. Yep, we photoed it, um, measured it, drew it, removed the artifacts, have the artifacts, have soil samples. We can do like an analysis on people's diet. Yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah, yeah. Soil so samples. Just, just yeah, this. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought so. Because mm -hmm. you'll have some kind of DNA or something like that yeah. you can do to decide what kind of things they were eating at the yeah, time. Exactly. Wow, yeah. that'll be fascinating. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to come back and tell us what you found yes. on that one. That, yes. that is interesting because I never thought about the fact that a privy or a well would be the place they would push mm -hmm. everything when mm -hmm. it was done. Yeah. Cool. All yeah. right, so where'd you go next? Okay, what's next? Popham. Is it Popham? I don't know. What... Yes, uh -huh. yes. Popham. Popham. So this was actually one of the first settlements in Maine, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's... Obviously a known site, there's a fort there. So we don't always go and look at places where we don't know if there's things. Sometimes we go where we know there's a site. And at Fort Popham, they're doing some uh, parking lot improvements. Okay. I don't know if they're gonna regrade and you know make a, make a couple of better parking spots down there. But basically they wanted someone to come and look. And before they started doing ground disturbance, we just put in, I think, six small test pits which are you know our test pits are 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters which is you know a foot and a half by a foot and a half and however deep they go um just to see what they would affect if they started um Working on dealing the dealing with parking lot um and if you go to the next picture what we found is at the at the bottom of the photo there that building was a um, coast guard building and the lighthouse keeper lived there and that building is no longer there so oh, wow. we found the foundations and infill of the cellar from that building so we know there's still foundations there they they took the building out but you know didn't do much else um and then beneath the foundations of that um, there's evidence that there was obviously, as you would expect, there was a Native American site in that area. Uh, so there had been people living there for thousands of years and then we came along and put a fort on it and then some other buildings. So you had the foundation, did you go underneath the foundation or were you able to dig around the foundation? You could tell around um, and then, you know, you can see all the like um, the fill material where they've kind of leveled out and landscaped and then beneath all of that there's just a little bit of material that suggests that Native people were living there. So would they have been the wanderers or would they have somebody that have camped there? Remember we, I remember when we talked at the beginning, right. first had the non-group that kind of wandered around the mm -hmm. state of Maine as a, individuals or small groups and later came together. Yeah, well. it, yeah. it would have been um, later time periods just because of the way that sea levels changed and people have lived at, at different places on the coast. Mm -hmm. Did you find any big piles of shells or anything like that? There were a few shells in there suggesting that once there was a shell mid in there, probably before they put the fort there. Right. <laughs> wow. So that, yeah. was, that must have been experience digging down there because yeah. that, that is what, 1600s that it was first established, something like that? Yes, it's right opposite. It's right, right on the point of land opposite the Popham Column. Wow. Yeah, huh. Wow. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So where do we go next? Where do we go next? Next picture. Oh, we're going to the Bowtie Boys. Trail Project. Trail Projects? 
Okay, trail projects. Yeah, we've, we've done a few trail projects in Maine. Um, we actually did one, a little one, down in Bridgeton at the end of the season um, for um, Pondicherry Park. Um, they just needed to do some uh, resurfacing, regrading, but because they were going to affect just the top few centimeters, top few inches of soil, we had to do some archaeology just to make sure, because it's a really nice spot, you know, there could be archaeological sites there. We had to do um, check to make sure there was nothing there before they affected the soil, um, and there was nothing. Um, but we've done quite a few substantial trail projects, a couple related to Katahdin Woods and Waters, um, and up in that direction on, on the east branch of the Penobscot and uh, some of the, the Sabois River, which goes into the east branch. Um, and those projects, because they have federal money related to Katahdin Woods and Waters, um, get archaeological review. So if you're going to do a trail project that maybe puts in um, a little bit of gravel surface, or if it evens out an uneven surface, or if you put in, um, you know, those wood things that, to, to help the runoff, that kind of stuff. If there's any form of ground disturbance, um, you need an archaeological review. So we went in and we had a look, um, dug a few test bits where, where it looked like there could have been encampments, and sure enough, um, being on the east branch of the Penobscot, right yeah, in the middle of Penobscot territory, that, of course, we find evidence for um, Penobscot people living there for um, three, four, five, six thousand years. Really? Yep. yep. Really? So go back to the Pondcherry one for a minute. Again, that was probably federal money that was helping them build the trail. Is that why they had to do? Um, I think that was. I think that was a state, state money, a state grant that for them. Yep. But uh, we just had the picture up. We can go back to it to show some of the pictures. So you found. So you're looking on the landscape up there. You're close to water. Yes. You're finding some kind of a flat area that looks like it looks like in the one picture. To right. The you can see it's just a beautiful spot. Uh, so that it makes sense that if you got if I were out there, I'd say, boy, this is a place I would right. put a camp. Right. Right. This is probably where somebody and it's, camp. It, and it's way up in the main woods now. You know, it's way up north east of Millinocket. You know, and and there's not much going on there now, um, but historically there was a lot of logging activity and of course you know sportsmen's camps um but in terms of native peoples it you know the the penobscot was their highway always has been their highway you know so so there's as much archaeological activity up there um as there would be anywhere else so that's the Savoy's trail there's some of the things you found yep yep just an example of some of the uh big big bifaces like um stone knives and a and a little projectile point there that's a, a late archaic period one six six five six thousand years old wow and you um, found those up there yes yep. and on those sites wow yeah yep. that's fascinating mm -hmm. so how far back in the woods were they? They a long way. Did you have to hike in to do this analysis, or did, was the trail there, and they just want to improve the trail? Yeah, the trail was mostly there. Some some of the trails um, didn't really exist, and we had kind of had to hike in along where they were going to put it. Yeah, and and some of them were trail improvements. How long were you up there doing that? Um, a couple of weeks, I think. That's all it took. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty fascinating. I mean, yeah. to go up there and walk through the woods and then yeah. say, "Oh, this looks like the site." Yeah. Now, did you? Think of some and thought it was good and it didn't end up panning out or were you pretty... Yeah, there's always some places that you think, oh, this would be perfect and then you don't find anything and you wonder why people, you know, weren't there. So when you dig through that, okay, so you dig the pit, mm -hmm. so did you find those artifacts in the pit or did you expand, uh, get an indication that it might be something there and expand it accordingly? We did do a phase two. We found, I think we found four, four or five sites on each one of those trails, Katahdin trails and Savoy's trails. Um, we found um, four or five sites. We did the phase one, so we found some flakes, a few, a few pieces in the phase one, and then we did the phase two and expanded just to see what was there, how old the site was, and primarily to see if we could shift the trail out of the site area. Oh, so the site's that's... still there, and the trail now goes, you know, up a different slope around the corner, you know. So no, it kept no people from poking around in yeah. there. So in case yeah. they found something and said, oh, let's yeah. go poke some get, more. Get the, the trail away from the site and also, um, like, like you say, so people don't poke around and also so it doesn't impact the site from people walking through it. Now, in the parking lot, I'll go back to this. Suppose you found something really unique underneath mm -hmm. there. Could you have stopped the project? Stoppage would be things like if you found a cemetery or something under there. Yeah, that's that's like an automatic stoppage if, if you get human remains of some description. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then they'd have to make arrangements to move them before they, they yeah. can. Yeah. 
Um, it's, it's hard to imagine like what would be good enough archaeologically to get total stoppage. If you've already arranged to have a monitoring project, you're expecting to find something. And you've done some desktop research to figure out what it is you might find, like in the case of Portland, the remains of all these old houses. And the monitoring is to get, it's kind of like a, a almost like a point mitigation to, to sort of say, we're going to find stuff, this is what we're going to find, you, we have a limited amount of um, time to grab it and, and take it away and deal with it. Now when they, I had to go back to the parking lot, because that was a great exposure. Mm -hmm. So you're there actually they're stripping, are they being very careful stripping off the top? Yeah, yeah. Really? Um, yeah, these guys who, who use that heavy machinery really are working. accurate wow. with it. Yep, they, wow. they do great work. Yep. Okay, so where do we go next on our little tour? So okay, going... next one. Vermont. Vermont. Transmission. Tran oh, I don't know anything about transmission. You don't, I know you know nothing about know transmission nothing about science. Those transmission. So. <laughs> Um, we haven't done any transmissions lines in Maine. We work primarily in Vermont. Um, one of our major clients is Green Mountain Power out of Vermont. Um, and we've done quite a few transmission lines with them. And I thought I'd show these because it's a, just looking at it, we're, we're still in the middle of working on one of these. It's, it was our biggest project last year and it, it's a really good example of um, how we do archaeology and what we can see from what we find. You didn't so, get the job on the other transition line because they didn't hire anybody from Maine. Sorry about no that. No comment. Edi editorial <laughs> comment. Okay. So if we, if we look at those maps of Vermont. Back to um, the maps. If you look on the left-hand side map. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you can see there's like a little red line on both of those. One, one on the left-hand side one. I it's, see at the top. Yes, on the right-hand side I see the red line. Yep. Yeah. So the left-hand side project, the red line is right in that big purple blob. All the colored blobs oh, are... I see them, yes, yeah. Right? See, yeah. So the colored blobs are um, river drainages. Okay. Right? The purple blob on the left is the Otter Creek. That's the Salisbury to Weybridge line. It's called um, Transmission Line 60, TL60. And then the one on the right-hand side, the line, you can see the red line is way up the top, right. and it goes from like a kind of murky colored, that's Lamoille drainage, into a pink. That's the Missisquoi. So what's happening on the TL60 line on the left is it's following a river. And what's happening at the, it's, it, the Lowell to Johnson line, B20 on the right, is it's crossing mountains between rivers. So they're about the same length lines. The sensitivity along the river valley is obviously huge, higher. Huge, right, right. So for TL60 on the left, we did about 2,000 test pits and we're still going. Wow. And for B20 on the right, we did about 1,000 test pits and stopped. Do you want to guess which ones of those two transmission lines gave us the most archaeological sites? I'm going to guess the one you only did 1,000 holes in, did. No. No, the other one did. The, the, the other was, one, right. Oh, yeah. I, I should have known that, but I was just trying to be... So the one that went through the mountains, B20, we found five sites in 18 miles. And TL60, which it goes basically around the backside of Middlebury, if you know Vermont at all. Um, TL60, we're at 29 sites and counting. Wow. For a 14 mile corridor. Wow. So you can kind of see from the aerial photo on the right side of this, it's all fields. So that's the Champlain lowlands. It's, okay. it's kind of like near the edge of the lake and the field, you know, gently rolling landscape. And then on the right side of it, it's all kind of dark green. And that's, you're going into the green mountains. Okay. Get steep and sloping. Right. You can also see that all the dots on the right hand side are blue and all of the ones on the left hand side are red. Right. Blue is historic sites, historic period sites like cellar holes and things. Red ones are Native American sites. Wow. So what we're seeing oh. is a pattern that once you get into the hills, the most obvious things that you find are old cellar holes and old farmsteads and hamlets that nobody lives in any anymore. But once you're in the farmlands and the lowlands and near the rivers, you find both kinds of sites, but you find a lot more Native right. American sites near the rivers. But also what you would see in, in that is that um, the Native American sites, the red dots tend to be in lines so they use it as a transport line. Well, they're following the rivers, and they're also following, like, a transmission corridor that we've already tested and marked all the sites along oh, it. Oh, I gotcha. And they, there's not a lot of development happens in the Green Mountains. Right. So one of the things we see is, is the actual settlement pattern, and the other things we're seeing is this is the actual pattern of where we've looked for archaeological sites or where they're really obvious, like cell holes.
and someone has recorded them. Wow. So like you're seeing the two things yeah. on the one map. Yeah, yeah. Yep. cool. So now the last one we have is solar projects. Solar projects. So you've been involved in those too? We've done a lot of small ones, um, kind of like 20, 30, 40 acre ones. And then we did the big one in Farmington. I don't know if you know there's a big solar project. In oh, there is one here? There is. Yeah, there yeah, is. There's, there's big, those black yeah. things that are, we come into town. So you, they had to do an archaeological study there yes. because of site location permit probably. Yeah. Because yeah. it's 640 acres or something like that. It's, that was... it's pretty substantial, yeah. So what did yeah. you find there? Because that would have been close to the Sandy River. Yes. Um, it's actually on um, a lot of kind of rolling hills and, and side slopes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the red outline in these photos, by the way, I, I should just point out that um, there's a red outline that I use on the maps of the Farmington Solar Project um, that is the initial permit area it's okay. not it's not their final where they built okay. it was like you know this when we put, see the, you. the red yeah. lines yep. it, it's what we got when we started looking at it here's where we're thinking of putting this solar project for you to start looking so when we go out and do it you can see it's the, there's a little bit along the sandy and then there's a whole bunch up uh, in the in Woodland the hilly Park. areas right right so the first thing we do with anything like that is we do a desk review and, and this one got a pretty substantial one because, you know, 600 acres. So the first thing we do is we overlay their project onto historic maps. Okay. Yep. Which we have some images yep. of. So this one's a 1794, so you can see that it overlaps on a certain number of plots. Yep. But the way people lived on those plots is they were long skinny plots, uh, but the only place you'd find real occupation is either down by the river or up by the road. Okay. So a lot of those plots yeah, yeah. are empty and yeah. you're not going yeah, to see yeah. a lot. Right. So we already had an idea of who was going to be where. Um, and then if you look at a later map, it, it starts showing um, where the actual buildings were um, at, uh, in, in the 1800s. Um, and we can really start getting an idea of uh, uh, 1800s maps, especially in places like Maine, where you've got a lot of historic yeah, buildings yeah, still yeah, standing. Yeah, 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 you yeah. can compare that and say, OK, is this building still yeah, here? Yep. Yeah. Or would we expect to find a cell hole in that location? Yes. So we did all of that. Um, and also there is a Native American site vaguely within that area that we sampled the location of and it does not extend within the solar project. So that was fine. Okay. Um, and then we also found that there were a couple of historic sites that we designated. Um, some were just, you know, old farmsteads, cellar holes, walls, that kind of things. Um, and we actually found another section of the narrow gauge railroad. Really? Mm -hmm. Huh. Yep. So there's, um, there's us just digging kind of down towards the sandy, kind of a, a long route too. And yep. then, yep, this, this is the kind of thing that we were seeing that suggested a section of the railway. You, yep. you get, you know, bits of metal and pipe and rail and then, you know, obviously long kind of path looking yep. areas. It's similar, similar to what it looks like down at the, um, down at the playing fields. Yeah. Wow. Um, but yeah, we just mapped that all in and any features that we found, like any stream crossings and that kind of stuff. And I think just the last photo I have is, is you know, another piece of the documentary evidence that we look at is we, we had the survey notebook of um, the head surveyor um, in 1898 who laid out. Oh, the blots on there. Yeah, and this, this is actually a, um, it's a profile view that of uh, Beals Brook, which is just outside of the, of the area. So the, the line came across Beals Brook, like, you know, in, in his illustration there, and then into the area of the, the solar farm, and wow. then continued in this direction. So, this is quite a trip you had this summer. You were all over the place. Yeah, we've been all over. Yeah. So, will you come back on again when you finish up some of the, the work that you've done? I in absolutely will. All right, you promise? Yeah. Jenna, that was great again. As always, it flies by because time's <laughs> gone. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Talking Man with a Bowtie Boy. That was fascinating. That was great.